Next up, we have Steve Cannon, also known as Steve with two E's. Uh, last time he presented uh, Ether POS, and today he's going to be showing you SineWave. Hello, everyone. Uh, like last month, I presented Ether POS, and it has automated 90% of my business's business processes. And I was really inspired by all the talks at the last dev shop. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go see what I can do to tackle our next biggest problem. And our next biggest problem is paper. We produce about 120,000 sheets of legal documents a year, probably more. It's about 14 trees. The tattoo industry does about 53 million sheets of paper a year, about 6,400 trees. So in 21 days, between using Iron Router, the Discover Meteor book, and various uh, packages, um, I built SineWave, which has automated our release form management system. So you can sign up at biz.signwave.com. And I'm going to log in. Can you guys see this? So when you first log in, you would create a waiver template. So I'm going to create a template called Meteor X Rocket Rental Waiver, because you guys merged with SpaceX, OK? <laughs> OK. So I create it, and it puts me into a drag and drop editor real quick. And I'm going to drag over this thing that says Solar System Limitation Agreement. I, uh, your initials, agree to not leave the solar system. <laughs> OK, I'm going to delete this one. And it's saving the form while I'm doing this so I don't lose my changes, You know, kind of like Google Docs. And I'm going to drag over a customer, drag and drop, the customer. This will automatically create a user and a customer record, so a user in the database, right? And I'm going to make you take a picture of the rocket before you leave to make sure there's no damage. <laughs> right? Oops, sorry if I got typos in there. I know I'm under a time restraint. restraint. And a signature. OK. And the last one will be a payment. And that's going to be admin only. Oh, God, I'm running out of time. OK, so, and if you go to, if anyone wants to go to that URL right there, there's the form. You guys can go fill it out. Uh oh, out of time. And I sign my name. You're not a rocket. I am not a rocket. <laughs> and someone who's working at the counter sees that in the pending. They look through it. They say, everything looks great. We're going to charge you $60 because you rented it for a half an hour. <laughs> and this time, I don't have to have the card like in a, a form field. It can just detect, at least it should detect. And there it goes. See it processing, produces a receipt. And I sign it. Or I hand you the tablet, you sign it, you click Save. And then I complete the legal waiver, and it's now in the completeds. It'll take a minute to load it. But there it is. There's a completed one, archived forever. And uh, we've already got, like, besides my chain of stores signing up, we've been live for one day. We've got six or seven other studios signed up, two outdoor adventure places, and a yoga studio. So. <laughs> And that's the packages right there that I used. Those are the shoulders of the giants I stood on. Thank you, guys, right? And like last time, even a caveman can do it, right? OK. Any questions? It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. No, it wasn't. Um, it was really difficult, actually, to figure out. Um, Safari was frustrating. Oh, was the camera package a package that's in atmosphere? No, it was not. Um, and it was difficult to figure out. I ended up finding on GitHub Adi Asmani, the guy from Google, has a Git user media um, thingy, you know, and I use that. 
And I think that's really what they use in Google Hangouts, because it has the facial recognition, too, that you can use. And then for Apple devices in Safari, you have to fall back to that weird input type equals file, something camera star. It only works on those devices. It was weird. <laughs> so a little kludgy. Yeah? How did you scan your card? What, how did you get that into? OK, so he asked how I scanned my card. So a lot of these card reader things are just dumb, right? They just dumped uh, raw ASCII text. That's really how they work. That's how Nordstrom's and Target got hacked, right? Now, this one, they did RAM vector attacks on them, right? They did RAM scraping. That's what happened there. Um, this one in particular, though, is kind of neat. This thing does, um, when it gets plugged in and powers up, it gets a, a public key, an AES key, right? And it encrypts the, the swipe data. But the swipe data, I mean, if you really want to see it, if I got a little time here, I mean, you can, you can get one of these that's clear text or encrypted. It's up to you. Clear text is fun because you can swipe people's IDs and see all of the data. There, see? There it is. That's how they all work. There's nothing magical about them. Now that's encrypted on that one there. Okay, there was another question back there? Oh, OK. Yeah. <laughs> now, these things seem magical, but they're not really. So you put that in like an input field somewhere on the screen? Um, yeah, that's a good question. I don't remember what I do. What do I do with that? Yes, I put it on a hidden field. That's correct. Um, I have to listen to it on the window, right? And then what you do is you, you look for the start sentinel and the end sentinel, right? And when you see that flowing through, you capture it all. You put it in a hidden input field. And then when it's submitted, you process it. I have to send it to Heartland through their, it's called their portico gateway. Yes? I did, yes. He asked, did I use the same code for my other app? I did, absolutely. Is that something you pulled out for others to use? Um, I have to ask Heartland if I can. You have to actually have your application certified. You can't just use it and start processing against them. You have to go through this whole certification process. They make you do a whole bunch of different types of test transactions and scenarios, because they have dozens of different types of transactions and scenarios, like tips and adjustments and weirdness. Any other questions? There's one question from Twitter. Yeah. How long did it take to, to implement? OK, so I, I cobbled it. The question was, how long did it take to implement? I was inspired at the last dev shop. And sitting right over there, I cobbled together about 25% of it, which was really just kind of you know like the, um, uh, the, the bootstrap layout kind of stuff, you know what I mean, and, and all of it. I spent about a couple hours every day for the last 21 days. It took 21 days to build this. And we're paperless now. Okay. Now, uh, uh, I think I emailed you when I was done, like right. last week, right? And every day I do a little bit of work on it. But yeah, 21 days. And I think everyone should try that, you know, see what you can build in three weeks to solve a really big problem. Because it's possible, right? If a tattoo artist can do it, you can do it. <laughs> right? Right?